Oh, Mzanzi, welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. Let me tell you, this conversation is going to entertain and educate. Now, there's nothing like an explosion of blockchain news to leave you thinking, what's going on here? What's happening? Now, the term NFT seems to be everywhere these days. It is the hype word, and from art and music to hotcakes, these digital assets are selling like, well, hotcakes, I guess. So some of you may be still wondering what exactly they are and are NFTs even worth the money or the hype? Well, let's find out. So we got some experts in the building and uh, they are bubbled, poised to pop and give us this information. So others believe NFTs are here to stay and that they will change investing forever. But today we're going to break down everything about NFTs with our panel consisting of our resident tech guru, Grant Hines in the building, as well as business development lead at Polygon Enterprise, MJ. Michael Jordan in the house, okay? So it's an incredible conversation and we are here to just talk about this more. We might have another artiste to weigh in on this conversation, but for now, we're encouraging you to join in on this discussion and share your thoughts and experiences with us. Come through on that voice note and uh, you can share that on our WhatsApp line. It's 063-408-8863. Gentlemen, good morning. How are we doing? Very well. Very well. <laughs> I see some skeptical faces. I see some exciting <laughs> faces. I'm going to navigate this space with you. Grant, let's establish first exactly for everybody that doesn't know what's going on for the uninitiated, what do NFTs stand for? How does this thing work? Well, NFTs are, stands for non-fungible non token. Yeah. So uh, you can uh, basically, you, you, you can mint something on a blockchain uh, that lets you have ownership over a particular, it's a token that lets everybody on that blockchain know that you have ownership over a, a, a piece of digital material, generally a piece of digital mater material. So it's as, e it's as simple as that. It's a receipt okay. in, in many ways, right. but it's a receipt in, in a space that everybody understands and can be traced. Um, and it's also because you have ownership on it, there is the potential for you to sell that, that digital item on or for you to find other people and, uh, who have bought digital items that you desire um, and then buy those tokens from them. All right, and obviously traceability means transparency, so all the information is obviously locked within that. Michael, maybe I can ask you this then, with regards to what Grant is leading on from using that blockchain technology then, what is blockchain technology exactly, and how is that then essentially be using or incorporating NFTs to kind of make it work, if that's a good question, you know? So, yeah, blockchain essentially is a single source of truth. And this becomes very, very powerful with people transacting over the internet who don't know each other. So to have a database that everybody can agree on that this is, like I say, the truth, and it's been determined by computer algorithms, it allows for a lot of economic transactions to go forward. Now, Bitcoin was the first generation where we came out with these fungible tokens. Fungible meaning you don't care if you get this one or you get that one. A good example is gold. You just care about the weight of the gold. You don't care if you get that gold coin or that All other right. gold coin. Non-fungible is when there's multiple parameters that determine the value of something. And I guess if gold is like fungible, diamonds are non-fungible. You've got the cut, the color, the clarity, uh, the carrot. Course, okay. you know, the ladies right. know more on what, what makes these diamonds more valuable. And so NFTs can represent a whole host of different assets. Whereas your fungibles would more like you know, your cryptocurrencies, uh, a form of money, a form of token, whereas non-fungible can represent art pieces, title deeds, and a whole array of various assets. So is that the thing that's essentially making the, let's say for lack of a better term, the diamond more valuable? Would that mean that the art piece or that thing that's attached to it, the value comes from how valuable it actually is? Am I asking that correctly? Sorry, this is a very strange space to navigate, yes. but I want to just understand this, and I think to make it, break it down to layman's terms, is that what is increasing its value per se? Yes, well, I mean, it comes down to that whole scarcity. So with Bitcoin, there's going to be 21 million Bitcoins. With a non-fungible token, there's only one. Ah, okay. Yeah, the uniqueness of a product is, is important in the NFT space. So uh, you can get lots of different kinds of Bitcoin, right? Yes. And, and Bitcoin is, it can be farmed. Yes, like can mine it and it can be like... It's essentially, yeah. But you have one painting. You know, there's only one, um, the Demoiselles, you know, there's only, there's only one, uh, you know, specific piece by Basquiat. Right. And that's what, uh, that, that's, that's what people are buying. That's what makes it valuable. If, um, I think Andy Warhol kind of turned it on his head though when he made lo lots of many, but like, yeah. Uh, and obviously things have changed now with, um, with NFT paintings where, you know, you can procedurally generate a painting and then um, 
each of those ones are unique. They're uh, you know, procedurally generated to be uh, different from all the others. And then you buy that particular ape, and then that particular ape has got value because it's, uh, it's got attributes that make it, uh, you know. And, and, and essentially, blockchain terrible. ensures that we all agree that that, let's say, art piece or that token itself is then essentially, we're all agreeing then that that is the one, that is the, the, the scarce one that we're agreeing to based on blockchain, and that becomes that NFT that then has value or not. Right? No? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. Well, I, I would say it's more than that. Like, so there are certain reasons art pieces are popular. Not every painting that exists is valuable. Um, you know, if I sit down and paint a painting, no one's going to buy it for a, a million rand, well, unfortunately. Maybe, maybe. Unfortunately. <laughs> so I, I do see the, 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 where Michael is, what Michael is saying is that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a universal a, a platform that we agree on mm. um, that is, that is non-centered. That you know, people can go. Okay, cool. We understand that the value of X of this painting is X because we can see where it's happened. We've seen it a little bit in the property market already. A lot of these things aren't like brand new concepts. Like they already exist in our economy. This is just a way of making a, a proper ledger, a digital ledger of where this activity is happening, and that we can all again agree. We all agree right now, currently, that the rand is X to a dollar. Yes. You know, everywhere you go, that's what it is. Yes. And it's that's it's a sort of it's a similar thing, but it's decentralized. All banks have centralized uh -huh. their finances and all this stuff is decentralized for everybody around. Okay. It's starting to make sense. Mzanzi, I hope you're with us here and pay attention because this conversation is going to heat up even more because we're going to see what we can do with NFTs a little bit later. But before we get into that, let's chat to you, let's chat to the rest of the team. Can up and see what else is happening on the tech show. It's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, Azazi, welcome back. Your feel good breakfast show. The conversation is carrying on. We are talking about NFTs, trying to help you understand it, trying to see where the world is going with it and what you can actually do with it, maybe even capitalize. Now, NFTs are gaining notoriety now because they are becoming an increasingly popular way to buy and sell digital artwork too. Now, global markets for NFTs was worth a staggering, listen to this, 700 billion rand last year alone. Now, that's an amount that is approaching the total value of the entire global fine art market. That's how impactful this really is. Is it hype or is there more to it? We're going to find out more. We're going to resume our conversation on the popularity of NFTs. We've got our panel consisting of, of course, Grant Hines, our tech guru and business development lead at Polygon Enterprise, Michael Jordan. And we've also added another member to the panel, award-winning musician and fine artist, Arnu Carstens, in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, it's welcome the man and let's carry on with this conversation because I have so much to talk about. Arnu, how are you doing this morning, firstly? Fantastic, and you, you guys, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've just started to unpack exactly what NFTs were, how blockchain is associated to it, and we are about to dive into what's actually going on and how NFTs are being used. Perfect timing for you to join this conversation because you being an artist, being a musician, you obviously have just gotten involved in NFTs. How exactly are you doing that and why? Okay, there is so many answers to all of these questions. Yeah. It's such a fickle th thing. For me, um, it is a natural progression from where it's going. Uh, for me as a fine artist, of course, I'm going to take my paintings, going to rework it digitally mm -hmm. um, because it's awesome to be doing that. And then, um, uh, and, and it's got a marketplace, you know what I mean? I could take it, NFTs has got somewhere to go. Um, just, I find it, what happened in the music industry, I don't want it to happen to me in the art industry. So I want to be on top of it right from the beginning. And what do you mean when you say what happened to you? Look, the Possibly. music industry, we used to make a lot of money out of it. Yeah. Now you basically, it's, just, it's like stamp collecting. It's you can just download it anywhere. You basically can killed it. the music yeah. industry. It's only a few people making money or whatever. I see in NFTs a way where it can go, where, where it can enhance the world of the fine artists. You know, in the old days, you used to sell a painting and it used to... Eventually, it gets sold for millions, but the artists won't make that money. With NFTs, you're always going to make a little bit of these things. And uh, you're going to make something in perpetuity going into the future. And I would love to have one day if it would connect it with paintings. So you sell the painting and you get the NFT with it. And with that, the worth will go up. And <clears throat> you've got basically a tracking system on the whole okay. situation. So, so for me, I see a lot of things happening in the future as the technology evolves and stuff. We're maybe not there yet, but hopefully it will work that way. All right. Michael, maybe I can ask you, I mean, talking about art essentially, I mean, you're hearing 
I'm, I'm looking at some of these stats here. Some of these paintings that are being sold, they go for millions. People are paying millions for NFTs, for these things that you can't physically actually touch, right? Mm -hmm. They do exist in the digital world. We agree that it has some sort of value, but people are literally paying millions for this. How, how does this work? And are there any risks associated to this? Can I pay seven million for something and then try to sell it later on and I don't get that sale? Can I lose money or is it guaranteed to be an investment in that sense? I mean, how does that space work when it comes to the fact that, let's say, Anu Carsons has sold a fine art painting. I love him. He's an absolute legend. He's had such an impact in my life. I'm willing to pay a million rand. Is that an investment for me or is there a risk associated to that? Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, we can unpack it with, you know, from the artist side and I guess from the, the investor side. From the artist side, NFTs, it's a game changer. I mean, for first Thursdays, I like to, you know, put up a piece every, every year. And of course, I had to stop doing that when, when COVID hit. And that's actually what got me into NFTs because okay. I wanted to keep doing my online, um, you know, exhibitions. And it was amazing. As an artist, rookie artist, I sold maybe one piece a year um, in the, the physical world. When I went to NFTs, these things started selling like hotcakes, as you were saying. Okay. It was amazing how they were selling for more, selling very quickly. So I thought, why was this happening? And I realized that when I was going to a traditional gallery, first of all, they were a bit of a gatekeeper. They decided which pieces I could show, and I could only show a few pieces. Mm. Also, there was the whole logistic burden of getting these things into the gallery, worrying that they might get damaged. Then someone comes in, looks, and they have to think, is there space in my house? There's all these considerations. There's cost to that, the insurance, there's cost, the logistical oh, cost, of it's, course. It's yeah. a mess. As an NFT, there's no gatekeeper. I just upload it, and I can upload as many as I want. Now, also, in a traditional gallery here in Cape Town, you maybe have 50 people looking at your art piece. As NFTs, I did like a little self-portrait that got over 10,000 views. And now you have people all over the world that are able to look at this, and for them to purchase it, it's not taking up space in their house or they have to think, oh, there's a wall that I have to hang it on. They can just add it into their digital collection. And so they can buy a lot more. So now what NFTs have done is artists are selling a lot more because now there's a lot more art collectors. Now, coming to your second question, you know, regarding the, the risks, it's interesting. Art was, you know, my hobby. Uh, my profession is actuarial science. And we look at risk, you know, in two, two ways. We've got upside risk and downside risk. The downside risk for an artist to sell their, their piece as an NFT, there's the financial risk of you pay the transaction fee, which can be $10, you know, 200 yeah. rand around there. Um, a very small financial risk. Of course, there's more of that emotional risk of putting something out there and not selling, and you get these weird emotional feelings like, you know, oh, why isn't it selling? But the positives, or well, the upside risk is, yes, that these pieces can sell for tremendous amounts of money. Um, there was an artist called X Copy who sold his first art pieces for like two pounds. They're now selling for, I think, seven million dollars, one of his things went for. And as Anu was talking wow. about, NFTs allowed for royalties to be baked in. So X Copy gets 10% of all those future sales, and therefore, in the traditional world, artists would have lost out on those yeah. big sales. Yes. X Copy is now still gaining from secondary and sales. Attaching that value to it from source all the way through to wherever it is right now in the world. Yes. Wow, all right. A lot to unpack here, a lot going on when it comes to NFTs, and we're going to carry on with this conversation. We've got a panel of experts here that are standing by to serve you, Mzanzi. So, of course, come through with those voice notes. We want to hear from you what your understanding is on NFTs. You have any experience or stories on it, but we're going to talk more about it and how it's actually being implemented. Grant's here to talk about gaming. We've got Ani here to talk about some more events coming up. So don't go anywhere. This conversation will continue. It's my feel good breakfast show. Oh, Zanzi, welcome back. I feel good breakfast show, and we are back wrapping up our conversation on NFTs. Now, modern artists, musicians, and internet legends aren't the only people capable of leveraging the exclusivity factor attached to NFTs to build an audience and turn a profit. Now, you can be part of this phenomenon too, and standing by, we've got our panel to deliver some helpful advice. And uh, of course, we've got our new year, MJ, Michael Jordan, <laughs> and uh, of course, Grant Hines in the building. But I want to talk to you, Mzanzi, and this is an opportunity for you, obviously, to send those voice notes through and they've been coming in thick and fast because we have so much to talk about so let's get straight into it uh first voice note let's find out who it is and what they have to say good morning everyone i hope you're having a great morning today yeah i actually have looked into non-fungible tokens like last year i think yeah and now that the bubble has like bursted i'm looking into investing into nfts and hopefully holding them for a long term 
All right, so looking to invest, I would say, I don't know, maybe you should invest in your paintings, possibly. Yeah, invest <laughs> in Michael Georgian uh, <laughs> <my> paintings. <laughs> Fantastic. But now, you were saying uh, early on, um, so if you hang on it, like he says, he wants to hang on it for a long, long time, right? It works like that in the real world with art. The longer you hang on to something, the more the worth it things. But um, with NFTs, it doesn't necessarily have to work like that. Or how does it work? You, you can't drop in, in well, the... Well, I think, I think this is a, a problem that art has had, you know, the commercial side of art has had for, for, <coughs> for the beginning of time since it started, is that art is, is valuable as a perception, right? We perceive that something is valuable because it had a social impact or because an artist did something unique, and that's what gives it value. Um, and a, a board of critics or society gives it that, that particular value. And then uh, because of that impact that it has, it's special. It's special to society. And we, was, we briefly spoke about pop art and the impact that pop art had. But not every pop artist has had the light of day. So you can't go home and go like, oh, I'm going to make this. I really get upset. I've been to the Tate with a friend and somebody in the 1950s hung up an A4 sheet of paper and it's in the Tate and he was like, I can do that. It's like, you weren't the first to do that. That's why you're not there. Okay. Um, and I think it's the same thing with, with <clears throat> NFTs. Just because an art piece is an NFT doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be valuable. Okay. It's, we've attributed uh, a value to it but whether it increases or decreases in value is a societal thing. Right. It's, it's the impact that that piece is going to have on society. Mm -hmm. And I think the art world right now in NFTs is exciting. Uh, I think the, the most exciting stuff is actually gone, and it's mostly around how artists have exploited technology to put themselves uh, in galleries and spaces. I think that there's going to be a huge uh, uh, NFT uh, display at the moment, and we're going to see X-Copy and, the, and the, the apes over there, and we're going to see like, the people that did, that did unique things for the first time. Those are what we're going to study in history of art books. Um, but that doesn't mean that other artists of don't course. have value, right? Yeah. The, the, those are the ones that are going to be billion, billionaires. Um, and when they die, trillionaires, the collectors of those pieces. But it, the, the other art that we, that we have physically still has value. It might not be to that level. So, uh, yeah, it but depends where that marketplace is. art piece was collected and kept over time, and him as the brand started doing something crazy, got hype and added value to whatever else he was doing, that essentially could then add value to the art at the same time, right? Yeah. Depending on the hype. Look, look like Van Gogh, like he, he, he didn't make a lot of money in his life. He barely sold a painting. Yeah. Um, but when he passed, because of his impact and the kind of artwork that he did, his paintings are priceless now. Okay. Um, and it's, you know, so like that could happen to people making NFTs. You might be making them at home and making like a dollar or a pound, but the impact that you're making will only be realized after you've passed. We don't know that. We All right. That. Listen, Mzanzi, this conversation could go on forever and I think it definitely can and it can continue even beyond the show. So I think for a lot of us, it's been an incredible opportunity to get more educated on NFTs and what it's all about. For now though, if you are wanting to find out more with regards to artists and art, you can maybe get in touch with Arnu and find out more about what he's doing in this space. You can also maybe chat to Michael as well and chat to him about anything with regards to the space of NFTs, how to invest and what to look out for. And of course, Grant Hines is here when it comes to gaming and NFTs and maybe just how to have fun with it, right? So these experts will definitely be uh, willing to carry on with this conversation a little bit later. For now though, obviously, it's time to meet an artist that is actually deep in the game already. Let's check this out.